our next guest has an acronym for CHAMP, but I think he also lives the life of a CHAMP. Let's find out more. Building spirituality, family, health, and business. This is The Giant Builders with Lois Wyant. All right, Giant Builders, today we have Dave Champ Moore, and he has an acronym for CHAMP. So what does CHAMP stand for, Dave? So CHAMP, yes, like you said, it's an acronym. stands for Create History and Make Possibilities. Hmm. So what does that really, what does that mean to you? So for me, the first part of the acronym, the Create History, I kind of wanted to use it as motivation for myself, as in like leaving a legacy for yourself, creating something, making your history, your family's history, whatever that is, you know, the tail end of it the, and make possibilities. That's uh, help elevate other people too. you know what I mean? Like provide opportunities, provide that for those around you. When you help other people build too. You all become champs, champions. Oh, I'm kind of like. Our giant builders are, we help build each other, or build giants in our family. So it's um, yeah. kind of a, a kind of reflective of that. Exactly. So, so what do you do with Champ? So me, I, um, I do a little bit of everything. I know, I know. I am actually an author. And then I do podcasting as well. And then my main thing is the entertainment industry with acting and writing. Oh, okay. So So, what did you write or or books? Okay. Yeah. (laughs) Um, So my first book was a few years ago. It's called Disadvantages versus Advantages. And it's basically kind of a self-help book where you can find the light at the end of the tunnel and see your cup as overflowing rather than half empty. I kind of talked about stuff from coping with death, you know, car troubles and, and, and feeling replaced. And I wrote it before COVID, which is like crazy now because I feel like I could write a whole second thing because <laughs> we've all experienced some craziness. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so that was the first book. And um, the second one was actually a children's book called Alvin Travels America. And it's just like it sounds. It's just about our 50 states and a way for us to broaden our knowledge because maybe you don't have the chance to travel and you can teach your kids and yet the adults can get the same uh, information. Oh, that's great. Does the children's book go more like what you see now or history of the states? So a a little bit of both. I, I, I know I told you offline that, uh, I'm in Baltimore at the moment, and um, the reason is because I like the Ravens, the the football team here, and I just never realized I could, as a kid, I didn't realize I could travel to Baltimore and check a game out, you know, and I think we just forget about, you know, where we can go, where we can explore, and sometimes you need that push, and I didn't even realize my book would motivate me to, like, get out of my comfort zone and, and check things out. So it's it's about everything. It's history, but yet yeah, still stuff that's, you know, modern day information. Well, tell me, what do you do for clients? More, would it make sense to say more inspirational stuff? Oh, that's great. <laughs> okay. I was going to say, um, it's kind of like my acronym, which was Champ Great History, Make Possibilities. For clients, I talk to people and I don't want to say like, oh, I'm a coach, like a, I don't know the proper name for it, but I really do like to just see other people kind of win. And like I said, when you elevate others, you are actually elevating yourself as well. When I do stuff, this is more my production side, but if I am part of a production and say you had a film you wanted to do or a book you wanted to write. I'm going to help you get that book published. I'm going to help you get that film done. I'm going to tell you the ways I've done it. I'm going to tell you the the things that I know have worked for me, haven't worked for me. And it's it's different for everybody. But I think that that's what I can kind of provide as far as like 
information and what I know in detail and just how to organize it, how to just actually put it down on paper and bring it and manifest it to life. Oh, that sounds exciting. So your client are people who want to write a book or make a film? Is that a lot? Yeah. A lot of the things I've done more so with actually having clients, because I, I have a brand, but it's my mom's part of it too. And she does something completely different. But yeah, anything that I do with clients, I do revisions for books. Like I said, I do, I am actually like an executive producer with stuff as well. So yeah, it, it, it falls along more of those lines, anything kind of in the creativity field that, like I said, I can provide any type of intel with. How would you advise somebody to start if they wanted to write a book or a movie? Two different answers. I'll do the book one first. Okay. If you want to write a book, I think the hardest thing to do is honestly start. And I'm sure you know that. Just start writing down what's happening for you in the moment or daily. And like, actually, maybe these will tie together. With filming, you need that, like, kind of that, uh, that creative spark to happen or else you might write something that you'll later throw away or think it's not really relevant anymore or any good because you don't feel that way anymore. Emotional writing is what I call it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I bet there's a lot of that. <laughs> yes, no, yes, it's, it's true. You want to make sure it has substance. If you are becoming a writer or you're just, you're, you're kind of green to it, I definitely say to start actually physically writing it. It's something different in our brains when I feel like you actually see it physically in front of you. And it's just something that you can kind of just keep yourself motivated and, um, and able to, like I said, physically see it. So write it down, have some sort of a, an outline for what you want to truly talk about. And then we think we have to do so much, like I'm gonna do, 50 pages this week, or, uh, you know, I'm, a, <laughs> I'm going to type out 10 pages today. Just do 10, 15 minutes a day. And, 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 and or if you feel kind of like you can do more, do more. But if you set that goal at the like 15 or 20 minute mark, you'll do a lot more. And then you're not kind of over stressing yourself to the point where like, if you don't get the, the 50 pages you wanted to do, you don't beat yourself up and then let it go. You 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 kind of keep it going. And, oh, um, good suggestion. Yeah. yeah, I can see where somebody could get overwhelmed with you know, sitting there for an hour and then nothing comes to you, so you would have a tendency to kind of give up on it. Writer's block. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not one of those things like you hear writers sabbaticals where they go to a country place for two months <laughs> and come back with a book. <laughs> That's what I'm doing right now. Like I was telling you, I, I needed a trip away to, to Baltimore. Like I'm in the middle of writing um, the third book. And I tell you what, it's been the most stressful because I told myself an unrealistic goal mm. and uh, I haven't hit the expectation. So I'm taking a, that's another thing. Take a step back, reflect, live life a little bit, and then you'll find the inspiration through what you're living by or, or living through. So. So what's your current book on? All right, you ready for this? Yeah, I'm yeah. ready. <laughs> <laughs> uh, during COVID, a lot of my friends reached out to me about um, prayer life. Ooh. And, you know, basically they knew about God or whatever their higher belief was. And like, I don't knock anybody of what they want to believe. I'm, I'm a firm believer in God. They didn't even know how to pray and it wasn't like a bad thing they just never were taught mm -hmm. never knew you could just do it freely at any time in the day so I took 30 days and I kind of journaled a prayer each day okay so like I said say if you were traveling I'm just using that as an example because I'm doing that Day one traveling, I talk about what kind of happened during the traveling, the good things, the bad. And I said, you know, dear God, thank you for allowing me to be able to travel, travel safely, um, travel, see friends, all that. And then it's just like just talking with another person when you're like just speaking like that. 
how to pray is uh kind of what the book premise is kind of about Oh, that is really cool. All right. So we'll have to come back after you get that book and we'll have to talk about it. Okay. All right. Okay. All right, don't forget. That's the deal. Don't forget. That's the deal. Right, That's okay. the deal. I get okay. you a signed copy too. Oh. <laughs> okay. Give me two and I'll give one away. Okay. Hey, okay. Deal. Okay. Deal. Okay. Deal. All right. So now, John Builders, you know, look for us in the future here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to, I'm not going to tie you into a timeline because I don't want to stress you out. So that's all. No, right. it's, you're okay if I have a timeline, which I, of course, do. Mm -hmm. But like you said, you don't but, have But don't, don't say it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say next three to five months, it'll be totally complete. Oh, good. Great. Uh, you're, you're writing this book. Mm -hmm. Is it going to be a self-published book? Yeah. Um, I don't know if you... Are you aware with how you can do uh, like the Amazon self-publishing? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. I'm still in the process of learning. That's another thing too. You can mm -hmm. always learn more after you complete your task, but uh, learning how to get it actually into physical, like brick and mortar, um, you know, okay. book companies and stuff like that. But yeah, I've gone through the self-publishing way and it's, it's still been helpful. It's still been cool. And like when you receive it in your hand, like your work, you're just like, Yo, I, I, I did. I don't know. Like you're, it's, it makes all the stress kind of feel great. Like mm -hmm. all the work kind of put into it. So. All right. Well, I'm going to do an introduction between you and a previous um, guest, Victoria Scudder, because she okay. also, she does children's books, but Ooh. she recently put her books into bookstores. So you guys could chat and um, talk about the process that she went through. Okay. That would be lovely. Yeah, that would no be problem. Lovely. That's cool. what we're here for. We just want to help each other, right? Builders, yeah. Builders. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Great. So what, what's your plans after the book? What are you going to be doing next? Don't we all wish we knew that? <laughs> <laughs> honestly, honestly, once I finish the book, I'm sure I'll start another. But I also know that I need to... Um, get back into the screenwriting more. So I'm going to probably branch back into uh, kind of the screenwriting stuff for the for the 2023 year. Tell me what the book writing is doing for you with your relationship with God. It is a diary. I, I'm going to be honest. Like I told you how the children's book kind of motivated me to travel. And like mm -hmm. when I um, when I'm reading my prayer book, when I'm revising it and stuff, you kind of forget some of the stuff you write about when it's been a little bit mm -hmm. and you forget that you can inspire and motivate yourself with even your own words. I think that's been cool for me because I had over the summer, I had a terrible day of like car issues. And when I say terrible, like within six days, my car battery died flat tire. It's a oh. push it's it's a push to start the engine yeah. wouldn't turn off so many things happen um i got rear-ended my bumper fell off like crazy oh and it was honestly patience and i say you can't spell you know testimony without test or i just had a moment where i like broke down and kind of cried to myself and i forgot about that day because the car is good now everything's good mm -hmm. but I was going through something else when I revised that chapter. And then that reminded me that I got through one of the hardest times in that moment mm -hmm. and still here breathing. I'm going to get through this bad time too. This is my personal belief. Yeah. When you're doing something that is so for God. Satan will attack you more. Yeah. Because he wants to stop you and slow you down. So that is just an impactful item that you are definitely doing something that's going to bring eyes to God. Thank you. Thank you. I love that you just said that too. Cause like I wear, I wear my cross. You can see kind of then I have a nickname. I won't go into the other half of it, but nickname was Eagle as a kid. And I wear this hat all the time that says God's Eagle. Oh, cool. And so like, when you say that I wear this as armor, and I know it protects me. And uh, yeah. you're right. Satan will definitely try to find a way to manipulate and, and get to you. And uh, we just got to be stronger. That's all. Mm -hmm. That's all. So. Yeah.
That's beautiful. That's great. Tell me a little bit about some of your short films. So I'll talk about my main one. It's uh, it's called Echo. And it's based upon a, I know we're in the, the era of like superheroes being a big thing. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I love them. So <laughs> grew up to them. I, I made a kind of a superhero film. It's a vigilante, but it's based on a deaf veteran that loses his hearing in war and has to kind of adjust to his life, you know, after that. That was a fun thing to write, but it was even cooler because as an actor, I got to kind of express a different side of me that had to learn a little bit of sign language and a little bit of just like paying attention to people's lips more. Yeah. Just stuff that you might not think about. And then during COVID is when we filmed it. Mm. And I was so locked into the character that uh, <laughs> we were wearing masks on set. And I was wow. like frustrated because I had earplugs and, and I, I really had to like focus on body language and um, a whole bunch of different stuff. And we don't think about that for like what deaf people really were going through during mm-hmm. a couple of years. Oh, yeah, because they couldn't, they couldn't see what you were saying, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So. So that must have been another experience God wanted you to, to feel. <laughs> I think so. I, I do. I enjoy filmmaking and I'm kind of like extreme where in a good way, I think, where I just rather than writing a superhero film, like I said, I made it about a deaf, you know, vigilante. And people are like, where did you get that idea? And I was like, I think because, you know, deaf people can watch movies still. And if we make movies about blind people, they can't really watch it. And I just wanted to, them to have something to relate to. And they're just like, it would still make sense without that. And I'm like, let's just try it. Let's just do it. Let's just make it work. So, yeah. yeah. Well, that's great. Thank you. So, Thank you. how can we see that movie? Ah, uh, it's a link. I don't know if you've heard of Vimeo before, because it's something mm-hmm. that, so it's, it's there. Um, it's under Chance Moore. Can you share the link with us? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I can get right. you. yeah. okay we'll put I, the link below. Okay, perfect. Okay, I'll see the, the whole, yeah, all that. That works. Oh, great. So, yeah. Oh, I appreciate that. Yeah, uh, I appreciate you. <laughs> <laughs> so, any closing thoughts? Honestly, just adjustments. I, I actually went to, before I came to Baltimore, I went to my high school to talk to the kids and it was a, it was a diversity program. And I didn't have that when I was in high school, but like I had this thought with them because they were the middle school crew that like didn't, that missed school for two years. Oh yeah, yeah. And, and like, I just wouldn't imagine socially what that would have done to me because I'm kind of an, an extrovert. Mm-hmm. And I talked to them and I said, you know, like what you guys face for the first time of your life at your age, I did, you did, their teacher did, everybody did. And I just said adjustments, just the word to me was just adjust and audible. And basically you'll find a way even when you feel like you don't. Mm-hmm. Not all options are gone. So just keep pushing and and it'll it'll if you don't find it it'll eventually find you for the better that was great that was a good closing thought <laughs> thank you thank you how can people find you or reach out to you uh if you want to reach out to me i'm i would say i'm mostly on instagram i respond back it's a uh my name is champ c h a m p underscore more M O O R E. Okay, great. So, yeah, perfect. All right. Champ, thank you so much. I hope you have safe travels back home. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you, Giant Builders. Make sure, especially, check out the link below for his film. We want everybody to see his film. So, (laughs) if you want any book advice, give Champ a call. Do that. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Giant Builders. We'll see you next week. Thank you for listening. This has been The Giant Builders with Lois Wyant.